Bourbon Real Talk, and today we are going to do a review of Jack Daniels' new twice-barreled special release American single malt. Let's jump right into it. The producer, obviously, Jack Daniels, and this is part of their special release series, which has included the Heritage Barrel, the Jack Daniels Barrel Proof Rye, and Coy Hill releases. In 2013, Jack Daniels started making American single malts, although all the whiskeys that are in this release were actually distilled in 2015. Um, got the opportunity to talk with Chris from uh, Jack Daniels, and he basically said it took them a couple of tries before they were happy with the distillate that they were making since they weren't experienced with American single malt. The packaging on this bottle is interesting. It's going to be in the squat single barrel bottle. Uh, this will be bottled in a 700 ml instead of the traditional 750 ml. That's because back in 2020, the TTB expanded the standards of fill regulations to allow producers in the U.S. to release bottles in different sizes than were previously allowed. Uh, so this is more along the lines of what you'd see in Europe. The liquid is 100% malted barley, uh, which is the first time Jack Daniels has done a 100% malted barley whiskey. Everything in this release was aged for four plus years in new charred oak American barrels. Uh, then it was moved over to the Oloroso Sherry Butts, where it aged for almost three years. Sherry Butts are roughly two and a half times the size of a standard 53-gallon barrel. These were first-time fill after the Oloroso Sherry was removed. Uh, some interesting side notes about these barrels. Because they're so large, they don't fit in a rick. Uh, which is how Jack Daniels traditionally ages their barrels. Uh, so these had to be palletized. So instead of having their bung on their side, the bung is on the end and they're stood up on pallets. Um, and the only place for them was on the ground. So they'd fit them wherever they could in the rick house, uh, which is quite tall. And it's got all of those barrels up above. Um, and that's going to lead us to our next point. These barrels are going to come out between 106.1 and 107.8 proof. Uh, there's two reasons for that. One, because they proofed the whiskey down before it went into the sherry butt. Uh, I believe they took it down to 107 proof. And most of these barrels lost a little bit of proof during aging. Um, and that's partially because they were on the floor. Uh, there's a lot more temperature change at the top. That heat causes those barrels to evaporate water, increasing the humidity and the lower level floors will sometimes drink that water up out of the air and proof down the whiskey inside the barrel. And that is what has happened here. Almost all high-end single malts worldwide are made in a pot still, but Jack Daniels uses a column still or a continuous still. And they also use the Lincoln County process on that. Uh, just to give you a little bit of an understanding, that would be kind of like taking distilled water and then running it through a Brita filter. Uh, malted barley is already pretty light on flavor compounds compared to, you know, corn or rye or even wheat. Uh, so then when you put it through two stripping runs, uh, the, the column still and then the Lincoln County process, that's not going to leave a whole lot of flavor in the distillate, uh, which I find interesting because they are going to release single malts by themselves that are unfinished. And I expect that those were going to be very heavily flavored with barrel flavors and not a lot of grain flavors. But when the tasting team was tasting this product, they felt like it was lacking some sweetness that they're used to from the corn and the rye that's in their normal whiskey. So they decided they wanted some bolder flavors added. And that's when they decided to finish this in Oloroso Sherry. So what does it taste like? Uh, on the nose, it's a very complex nose. And the first thing that I notice is a chocolate note, but it's not like a, a bitter dark chocolate. It's closer to like a milk chocolate. And there's, there's quite a bit of fruit in this. It's like a darker fruit, something that I don't always get on, you know, bourbon or even Jack Daniels Tennessee whiskey. And maybe even some red fruit. And there's a floral note in the, the mid palette uh, here that I'm going to guess is probably heliotrope, which is pretty close to like a baby oil, something like that. And there's some nuttiness in this. Um, and there's a hint of what I'll call petrol, uh, which sound, it, it, it smells a little, a little bit like gasoline, a little bit like um, black tire smoke, something like that. And um, let's see how it tastes. The milk chocolate's definitely coming through. That fruit flavor is kind of coming through as like a red raspberry for me. And a darker fruit, like probably fig.
I'm also getting that petrol note, which I'm guessing is from the oxidative quality of sherry. So when, when sherry is aging, especially Oloroso sherry, um, they, they expose it to a lot of oxygen and uh, wine uh, based alcohol is very reactive with oxygen, unlike whiskey. And that flavor sometimes come a, comes across for me as that, that petrol note. I am getting a hint of peanut and that floral note is definitely coming through on the finish. Um, I, I'm not tasting it as much on the attack or the mid palate, but on the finish, the floral note seems to shine a little bit. Um, I will say that there's little to no indication that this product has Jack Daniels DNA. I'm not getting any banana notes. Um, maybe the peanut could be from the Jack Daniels yeast strain, uh, but because sherries can be a little bit nutty, it might be coming from the sherry barrel, barrel as well. Uh, really hard to say. Uh, the only whiskey that I can think of that tastes like this, if you're trying to get a comparison, would be this guy right here, which is Kavalon uh, Vino Barrique. And what makes me think that these two are similar to one another is the heavy influence of the wine barrel on this single malt product because this is a very heavy influence of Oloroso Sherry on this product. It's funny because the press re release says that it was a subtle influence and that is untrue. There is nothing subtle about the Oloroso Sherry influence on this product. Uh, but what I recommend it 10 of 10, unless you hate single malts, you are going to love this product. I, I kind of feel like this might be the final nail in the coffin of J Jack Daniels deniers. I get that there's a bunch of people out there that had bad experiences with old number seven. Maybe you drank too much at a party when you were a kid or whatever. Um, I get that Jack Daniels old number seven is not the complex product that a lot of whiskey enthusiasts are used to. But now that they've released the Jack Daniel Single Barrel uh, Barrel Proofs, the Jack Daniel Barrel Proof Rye, Koi Hill, and now this, I, I, I kind of feel like this proves that Jack Daniel's capabilities go far beyond what the market imagined. And, you know, if you're running around saying that all Jack Daniels is bad, I, I kind of feel like at this point you're making a fool of yourself because their premium products are, you know, bar none. I, I feel like they've earned their space in the pantheon of respected American whiskey producers uh, with some of these special releases. So I uh, can't say enough about their special releases. Been really excited about everything I've tried lately. So I just want to thank everybody for tuning in. I hope that this information was helpful to you. Uh, please subscribe, ring the bell so you get notifications. And remember, if you woke up this morning and you're unsure whether or not anyone loved you, just know that I love you. And I'll see you next time on Bourbon Real Talk.